in the year 2019. A virus that originated from Wuhan, China spread throughout the world. Rumors say it came from a bat. Some say it came from a media. A few think it could even be aliens. I don't know. And I don't care. All I know is, I'm out of toilet paper. Hey, Weird UFO Show. Jess Rogie here. I'm Cliff Berrickman. This is my lovely and talented wife, Melissa Berrickman. Hi, guys. My name's Jamie, and I'm one of the co-hosts of That One Time I Was Abducted by Aliens podcast. Hi, I'm Bree from That One Time I Was Abducted by Aliens podcast. It's Ryan Spreck here from the Somewhere in the Skies podcast. I actually don't remember and it's not because I had an experience or anything I grew up watching Star Wars and um, watching Star Wars led me to have an open mind to believe that there are other beings out there and of course they have crafts so to me it wasn't that hard to stretch my imagination and I was hoping that there's UFOs and other life out there I had an initiation into this phenomenon I had a UFO sighting in 1995 I was 12 years old. I saw a triangular formation of lights in the sky above me, completely silent, uh, no structure, but it just passed over a body of water that I was fishing off of and uh, terrified me. I had absolutely no idea what it was, what it could have been, and I still don't to this day. But that was my, I guess, origin story into how I got interested in UFOs. I took that obsession and turned it, turned it into a, um, a part-time job, and now I'm a quote-unquote ufologist, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, I've got a pretty crappy memory in general, honestly, so not really, but I do remember being very young, like kindergarten age, four or five years old, and being aware of Sasquatches and how cool they were and all that sort of stuff, you know, from watching all the documentaries when I was young. Um, and I remember being in the woods, like Sequoia National Park, camping and looking for footprints when I was very, very young. So I don't have a real solid answer, but that's my earliest memory of all this. What about you? Um, mine would be Aliens, and it was the film Communion from the book. And I can't remember who directed it, but I remember being very terrified of Aliens. And then I got really into that. Yeah, Whitley Strieber uh, was oh. the um, author of that book. I, I only read the book. I never saw the movie, but... Yeah, that affected me in some weird ways, too. It's scary. I was about 18 years old, not when I had my first sighting, but when I really became obsessed and started doing the research. I basically cannonballed into the pool of the otherworldly. I got into UFOs when I was probably about 17 or 18, and I had my first like real interaction with UFOs and aliens, and I've been hooked ever since. It was never a planned career choice for me to, to be a cryptozoologist. <laughs> Um, I had a rather a colorful upbringing. My father's a scientist. <clears throat> we grew up, I grew up in the outdoors. Um, my mother was a travel agent. She loved to tell me about the Mothman and the Yeti. She was very adventurous and we traveled a lot and um, traveled all over the world. And when I was very young, I saw a TV show about Bigfoot and it combined all of the elements of my two favorite things, which were monsters and monster movies uh -huh. and, and animals and wildlife so cryptozoology seemed like a natural pass so it's weird my first conscious memory uh, is when i was in grade four um to like grade four and also grade six um but um a, i found a book and my mom like keeps insisting that i used to be obsessed with like crop circles and like ETs, even like as like in kindergarten, grade one, and like I have a book from grade two uh, on crop circles, and I have no recollection. Like I, had, I don't remember being obsessed with this at all. Like I had zero memory of this in my entire childhood. It's weird, but uh, but so so that's kind of like my earliest recollections, sporadic, 
it would like die down, be super interested. And then I went like hardcore skeptic mode, like, you know, like high nose, like glass nerd, like these guys are all crazy, you know, like uh, for like 10 years, like from 13 to about 23. And then uh, I slowly kind of went through this uh, shift. Um, and then I uh, had my own experiences with the phenomena um, or so I believe I did. And yeah. So I, this was a hard one. I sat for a minute and I thought about it and I had to say the Travis Walton case. Um, I watched fire in the sky growing up. Um, and I couldn't believe that this was a true story. And as an adult, you know, I've run into Travis at several different conferences and spoken to him and, you know, just hearing him tell the story, he's a very genuine man. So I would say that it, the Travis Walton case is probably one of the most credible cases of extraterrestrial contact. Yeah, uh, of course, a Tic Tac. Like, I know that's super controversial <laughs> these days, or uh, I don't know. But yeah, the Tic Tac's amazing. I know so many people who are my friends first and foremost before this whole UFO stuff. And, uh, you know, they were there. And it's just, it's such an amazing uh, case. And I know that due to my other connects, like, commercial pilots, active pilots, these things are still around. And, you know, uh, scientists on our own team have also recorded the Tic Tac UAP with like a 50K uh, device. So we're out here believing in that case and uh, cases like that, but yeah. My favorite UFO case isn't really a case, but more of a place. I love Dulce Base. There's a lot of craziness happening there, deep underground bases, lots of layers, lots of different types of species there. So it's definitely something to look into if you haven't before. Dulce is, I call it, the adult alien Disneyland. I'm going to have to go with uh, 1997, March 13th, the Phoenix Lights. That was really uh, eye-opening for me. Hmm. Yeah, it was like, hey, here we are. I'm going to fly through Phoenix. That was, that was something. My favorite sighting, I believe in 2011, was over a dome of rock in Jerusalem. It's highly debatable. I think most people will say that it's a hoax, but I honestly think that there have been other videos inserted online to make it less credible. I loved that it really showed the capabilities of a UFO and how unexpected it can be. But to be completely honest, and I think Jamie, my co-host, would definitely agree, my favorite sighting is going to have to be my own my own sightings. And I think you could have the most credible witnesses, testimonies, and you can see videos or whatever. But the only thing that's really going to change someone's mind or even hit home for them is when they have their own sighting. It's the cream of the crop. There's nothing else that can compare to that in my opinion. So ultimately my own sightings are the most important and are my favorite. No, my favorite UFO sighting is my own. I've seen two now. <laughs> um, a, a shooting star that changed directions in mid-flight and then the strange other thing. I thought it was the International Space Station, but then it changed directions. I don't know what either one of them was, um, but U, U stands for unidentified. I don't, didn't know what it was. <laughs> F for flying. It was flying an object. Well, that's a no-brainer. UFO. Twice. Wow, that's good. I do. Well, this one definitely was not debunked. This was the 1976 Tehran Iran incident where a fighter pilot, after reports of lights being seen over the city of Tehran, he went up into his plane to investigate. Uh, this was Parvis Jafari, and he went up to this diamond shaped huge craft in the sky, and as soon as he got near it, all his instruments in his plane started to malfunction. Uh, the large object he was seeing, diamond-shaped, it other small objects came off of it and started coming towards him. So he, he thought he was getting fired at at this point. So he tried to fire back his missiles. All his weapons went down. They didn't work at all. So he starts having a dogfight in the air with this UFO, or UFOs, I should say. The small objects went back to the big one, attached to it, thing disappeared. Uh, Parvis came down from the air, and before he even landed, the U.S. Air Force was already on the ground, ready to hear what he had to say. Now, we were leasing our planes to Iran at the time, so obviously, uh, U.S. Air Force and intelligence agencies, they wanted to know what outmaneuvered and shut down the weapons 
on their own plane. So this was a fascinating case. Um, tons of documents and files have been declassified about it from the DIA, the CIA. Um, I'm coming out with a very special episode of the Summer in the Skies podcast soon, covering the entire incident. So uh, be sure to check that out. Um, possibly, yeah. I mean, look at how quickly the virus changed everything and nobody saw it coming. I see no reason why this is going to be like that. In fact, we have more momentum, you know, than this thing did. Uh, and, and, and it's a positive thing, like the dis like disclosure on balance, of course, will have like positive results, I'd like to think. To be honest, I think that it's sort of already happened. Even though it's a slow drip, it's definitely out there. And I'm not expecting anything else from the government. I think they gave us that slice of pie and we're just supposed to be happy with it. But I believe that as long as we're all doing our part, if we continue to do the research, if we continue to put it out there and we continue to have the conversation, I think that it will accelerate and it'll become more widely talked about and known. I think it actually has already been announced if you know where to look. It turns out when WikiLeaks stole all those emails from the Democratic Party to try to get Trump in the office or whatever, whatever that, that old thing was, um, if you can go to WikiLeaks and look up the Podesta emails, look up UFO, look up unidentified aerial phenomenon. It's in there. The high level government officials were already talking about this and it is public record, even though it's illegal public record, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't look at it. If something's illegal, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, maybe. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's already out there. Go look. I'm with you on that one. That's my answer. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, I think that the existence of aliens has kind of already been announced with the government coming out and saying that, you know, they're looking into UFOs, the fact that we've found water on Mars and Europa. Um, I, I think it's kind of unofficially been announced. So I think that, yes, it'll be announced within the next five years because it's kind of already information that's out there. To the general public, I don't think so. Um, you know, uh, we had the uh, ATIP and the UFO announcement back in December of 2017, and the general public still have a problem kind of accepting that, or maybe it's just not in their paradigm. But um, I can say people I encounter in my normal daily private life will still like kind of look at me and laugh when I say, well, I'm also a UFO researcher. So I think to talk about entities or beings, we're a little further off for that, but that's just my opinion. I think it already has happened. I mean, so many astronauts and um, astrobiologists, astrophysicists have come forward and said, there's life, there's alien life out there. Whether it's visited our planet, that is the real question. Um, but I have no doubt that there is life out there, um, possibly intelligent and uh, maybe once or twice it's visited our planet, maybe more. I can't say. Um, but within the next five years, um, I think we'll be in a much, a much different place than we are now, especially coming out of this uh, crisis in the world right now. We're going to be looking at ourselves and what could be out there a whole different way. Um, and I think that's really good. Maybe some silver lining coming out of this horrible stuff going on in the world. So, um, yeah, I think it's very possible we could learn if alien life exists and uh, the bigger question if it's ever been here. Absolutely. I honestly don't really understand when someone believes in one and not the other. I think that they're connected somehow in some way, especially if you want to talk about interdimensionals or ultra terrestrials. There's something unknown that links the two of them together. And so why would I say that one can happen and one can't? We're all out here looking for the truth. And I don't think we're going to find the truth if we limit the answers. So to me, absolutely, there's no way that it can't be possible. It's all intertwined in this crazy universe. Somehow they're all in the same bubble. Yes, I just don't know what they are. I, are they deceased people that used to be here? I don't know. I, pro I don't know. Are they, are they uh, images being played like a tape recorder, that, that theory? I don't know. There's something going on and I don't know what it is. And I kind of don't care because that stuff's scary. Um, yeah, I do. Um, I was a huge skeptic of the paranormal for a very long time, which I know sounds ridiculous coming from a quote-unquote ufologist, but um, it was more a fear. I, I didn't want it to be real. 
Um, so I chose not to believe in it until uh, it literally fell in my lap. And I had a, I guess I would call it a paranormal or supernatural experience a couple years ago in Nova Scotia in Canada. Um, I won't go into it now, but let's just say it definitely made me a believer and uh, shook my paradigm for sure. <laughs> I 1 million percent think that ghosts are real. Um, I've dealt with ghosts before. I've had interactions with them, so they're 100% real. You can't deny that. And I think that the alien and the ghost realms kind of go hand in hand, uh, a different dimension, different realm, different world, parallel universe, who knows, but I think they're all kind of connected. Yeah. What about you? I know you think they're real. I know I, that, I right? I definitely think they're real. I had experiences when I was small. Nope. Cookies are done. <laughs> yeah. And, sorry. No, you go answer. You're okay. answering them all. Go get it. Hold on. I You're will... in our home after all. <laughs> I'll make cookies. But yeah, I I definitely believe it. Like, like Cliff said, you know, I don't know what they are. They're energy in some, some way. Um, I don't know. I guess generically I'll call them ghosts. But yes, I do believe in them. And I'm excited anytime we get kind of, any kind of activity. Sometimes we get some around the house too. No. Although, thanks to coronavirus, I'm not working at all right now. So, if anyone out there is watching and does work for the government and needs to recruit someone, it's you know where to find me. I wish. The bunny would be better. <laughs> yeah. Now, I can say I cannot confirm or deny that. <laughs> Again, um, I wish. I wish I've, been, on, I've been accused yeah. <laughs> of working. I've been accused of being a government shill in order uh, out here to repress the true information about Sasquatches. But that's just crazy. That guy's kooky. So um, I, again, if, if this is working for the government, I always thought the money would be better. Right. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Anybody saying anything like that? That's really funny. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I need no comment. No, I wish. Uh, and if I am, I'm probably doing a really shitty job at it. <laughs> I do not think that I'm some type of weird government agent, but who knows? With like MK Ultra and all that, maybe I'm just like a sleeper and I'm waiting for the word to like wake me up so I can go and like spread disinformation. But for now, I don't believe so. I think I'm, I think I'm government free. I'm a big hermit, so the thing I'm looking forward to most is visiting my parents and seeing my siblings um, and just, you know, doing something normal, I guess. But other than that, I'm pretty good staying at home, but I'm a little weird that way. I am looking forward to being able to get together and do <clears throat> kind of conventions and lectures in the traditional way. I mean, this is awesome what you're doing, Jane. I think it's a, it's a fabulous thing. And I really appreciate you giving people an opportunity to, to check this out and, and be entertained for, for a day. But, um, you know, I, I just like in the UFO field, there are Bigfoot conferences and cryptozoology conferences and things that I lecture at around the country. And it's really kind of a family. It's a big family. It's a community. Everyone knows each other. And, you know, you always meet new people and learn new things. And, um, you know, it's, there's just a lot of camaraderie. So I really enjoy do getting out uh, – to these events um, and hopefully later in the year, some of the, I've got several scheduled and I'm just hopeful that they still happen because I'd love to get out and connect with people. And we may not be connecting in the same way that we've always connected. Maybe we won't be quite as close when we take a selfie. Maybe we'll be putting hand sanitizer on a little bit more, yeah, but. Um, <laughs> Um, opening up the, the North American Bigfoot Center again, honestly. Because, yeah, besides not being able to work and having no money, I, I love it. Staying home all the time. I don't have to interact with a bunch of people. I could do this for a long, long time if I had an income, which I don't, which we don't. So yeah. I'd love to open up the museum again. Yeah. And see friends again and have dinner parties. I love doing that. Yeah.
I miss being social, even though I'm pretty antisocial. Yeah, she misses it perhaps a little bit more than I do. Yeah, and driving. I miss going around and driving. I am looking forward to just going outside and being around other people. Uh, now, we might not be shaking hands any longer or hugging for that matter, um, you know, right away, but I'm just looking forward to um, not life as normal because I think that word is gonna have a whole new definition once this is all over. Um, so I'm looking forward to what's gonna come out of all this, both, um, you know, as human beings, um, uh, from a historical context, from a sociological context, culture, science, um, healthcare, government, everything. Everything's gonna change and everything is already changing. So I'm looking forward to get back, getting back outside, looking up in the skies again and seeing what is out there. So um, I hope all of you will join me in doing that. Is being able to record with Jamie in person again. There's nothing like our energies being able to bounce back and forth off of each other. And that's really what makes our podcast work. We're best friends and we have a great time getting together and talking about subjects that we love. So I just can't wait to do that. What I'm looking forward to the most after quarantine would have to be hanging out with my co-host Bree. I miss her so much. We've been recording all of our episodes over Skype and it's kind of the way we've been talking. And I really just want to hang out with her, do some night watches, some drinking and recording. It's really all I kind of want to do. I don't know. There's so many mysteries and I think, they're all going to, you know, maybe the truth will surface. Maybe not. Maybe they'll just continue to be mysteries. But uh, we've had a great time hanging out with you guys. Yeah, yeah, thanks for asking us to do this. And I'm sorry we can't be there in person. I wish we could all be together and getting weird, you know, but that's just not the way it is. It's weird enough, I guess. This is weirder than anything we could have done together, I suppose. So Stay safe, stay positive, and don't forget to keep looking up. Thank you for um, listening to me blab on for UFO Lockdown here. It's a lot of fun. And be sure to check out all the amazing events that UFO Jane and Luke the Alien have put together for you guys today. Um, happy UFO Lockdown and keep searching the skies. Thank you. The weirdos. You're not alone. <laughs> Cheers to you guys.